Johnny and Dolly. The team is supported by ableauctions.ca. Closing your business? We can help. All right. Uh, today is Thursday, and all of our guests today are brought to you by Langley Chrysler. Again, a reminder, Langley Chrysler usually sponsors our Friday guests. We have tomorrow off and, and Monday. Uh, don't miss the game because your car needs servicing. Langley Chrysler will pick up service and drop off your car so you don't have to miss the action. Valet service only at langleychrysler.com. Uh, Just before we get to Thomas uh, Drance, you good, Rick? Yeah. Um, unsigned Delaney's hockey Taryn Langley inbox. That wasn't playoff hockey last night. It was a football game. Glad I'm not watching it. Uh, Rick, you must have started watching hockey in the Gretzky era. I'm old school. Best games are 2-1, uh, 3-2. I disagree with that. Smite division uh, back in the 80s. Come on. <clears throat> well, it was fun. It was, uh, there, there were a lot of goals. Wayne Gretzky goals. was around. The Oilers uh, were around. But, hey, a 2-1 game can be entertaining. I think a 9-6 right. game can be entertaining depending on, on how it goes. That's right. You know, big comeback uh, last night. I, th I thought it was entertaining. We're joined now uh, from The Athletic by Thomas Drantz. How are you, sir? I'm doing well. I'm doing well. Just recovering from that game last night. Gave you some whiplash watching it. I loved it. Give yeah. me high scoring yeah. hockey. Sure. Come on. That's it. That's it. Goals. Yeah. yeah. And, and it wasn't just goals. It was it, it, there was animosity there, a big comeback. There was a lot going on. There was the Kachuk family uh, hamming it up in the stands. Oh. It was uh, it was a scene. I, I swear, only hockey fans can see a game like that and be I like, know. "Oh, I want a two one game." Yeah, like, I really? I, really? I you know. saw you saw a two one game in in the first game. And it was nowhere near as riveting as what yeah. we saw last night in Calgary. It, it, it was okay, the, the Rangers Carolina game, but it wasn't. Oh, I thought it, it was wasn't brutal. like that. Yeah, it was. It, I, the, I, well, the I, end was good. Okay, I'll, I'll put that. Yeah, yeah. Carolina uh, just played badly, right? Like yeah. that was one where Carolina played badly, and and you know, quietly, quietly, because I know we're thinking like, wow, what an offensive explosion last night. Quietly, Edmonton played really badly last night. Mm -hmm. I just think they got to shoot on Markstrom having one of his absolute off games. To me, that wasn't a 9-6 game on form. It was like a 7-3 game in which Calgary's goalie briefly let Edmonton back into a game, into the game. And then, of course, the moment they did, Calgary reeled off the next 10 scoring chances. I don't really think that was like a bad defensive game from, from Calgary either. I, I just think Markstrom was off. And that sort of brings up some questions. I mean, Markstrom's playing what? His 73rd game yep. of mm -hmm. the season this weekend? Um, stakes are pretty high for me for Calgary to win this quickly because I think they can get by Edmonton if Markstrom's not at his best, but they're not getting by Colorado if Markstrom's not on point the way he has been for much of this year. Jacob Markstrom, a former Canuck, you know him uh, well. At least uh, you've watched him play a lot of hockey. What do you notice about him when he's having an off night? Well, you could see early he had that one puck handling miscue. Mm -hmm. Didn't result in anything, but he had that one puck handling miscue. When Markstrom's a little bit aggressive in terms of his puck handling decisions, in terms of when he attacks outside his net, I always sort of take that as a sign that he's maybe a little bit fatigued. I think that's sort of the first tip-off you get, the first part of his game where, where his decision-making um, can be a little bit uh, less than optimal. Is, is when he's making those types of reads. You saw it early last night, and then and then it wasn't his best game. Markstrom's going to be fine. He's by far the best goaltender in this series. Um, but, I mean, this is one of the best players in the world, period, when he's rested. It uh, doesn't look rested to me at the moment. We'll see if that becomes a storyline as this series goes along, or hopefully, in Ed for, for the Calgary Flames anyway, uh, they're able to nip this series in the bud. They're a dramatically superior team to the Oilers. I think the Oilers play a style that Calgary is well positioned to neuter. Uh, you're never going to neuter McDavid, but aside from that, I think they're well positioned to dominate this series. I think they got to end it quickly if they're going to lift the cup in 12 weeks' time. Thomas, uh, we were talking about you levy and Kachuk, the draft. Okay, now we're oh. looking. We're looking at. Well, forget about Why? that. I don't Why want, are we doing that? Thank you, Thomas. Not just Thomas. Forget. I'm not getting in this uh, with you because we've done this before, Painful. and you end up giving me a 37 minute answer, and we don't have time for that. Listen, Canucks draft. Oh, no, we only have time for your 37 minute questions. <laughs> when it, when, when hey, it, uh, that's hey, not now, true. Now you're 
And now you're laughing. My goodness, are we gonna have that's to wait not true. more minutes? That's for not true. Ilya Mikhaev? That's not true. That's not true. <laughs> We're at thirty six minutes 36, right now. Thirty six uh, you just uh, blew two minutes, uh, oh, Thomas. Boy. Look ahead I'm to gonna, the Canucks. I'm gonna read a book while you ask your question. Go ahead. Never mind. Look ahead to the Canucks draft. Fifteenth over <laughs> Ryan, put it down, put it down, put it down. Fifteenth the Canucks are gonna what do you see happening there? <laughs> <laughs> Well, Thomas, you blew the whole question. You just blew it all. No, by you ju- forgot what you were going to no, ask. No, 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 no. Listen to me. What do you see happening? Uh, forward, defense. Are they take as he says? You got to take the best player. And or why are we talking position? about the draft? We're talking about the draft because we're talking about Ulevi and uh, Kachuk today. I want. He's got insight on who they want to take. Tell us, Thomas, what's happening. Well, honestly, Rick. I think a lot of different options are on the table. I think yeah. there's some players Thank you. they like. Thank you. I think there's some players they like that are unlikely to be around. But 15th overall is a really interesting spot this year. Um, I think there's a sense that the drop-off comes around 12, and yet there's not a consensus on who those 12 guys are. Um, one of them could fall. You could see uh, one of the players, you know, uh, maybe, 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 and I want to say maybe with that sort of strained... Uh, tone because it, it all just depends. But the Austrian center has impressed a lot of scouts at the world at the uh, World Championships. Um, you know, I played Norway the other day, showed some high end compete. You'd have to think that that guy would appeal to the Canucks if he fell. Lecker Mackey is a guy who over in Europe, the buzz is that the Canucks have paid a lot of attention to him. A uh, bit of a sniper, hasn't sort of fallen outside the top ten in most mocks, most industry. Um, analysts suspect that he'll be gone. There's a couple of other Swedish forwards who are pretty interesting. Uh, Liam Ogren is one of them. A a gentleman named Ostland is the other. Um, Some buzz about the Canucks potentially having interest in those guys. I sort of wonder with where the Canucks are positioned and considering the lack of overall prospect quality in the system, the lack of draft capital that they're heading into this draft with. Of course, they don't have their second round pick. Yeah. Uh, echoes of the Oliver Ekman Larson Connor Garland deal. I sort of wonder if the Canucks will consider moving the pick, not moving the pick for win now help, but maybe moving back in the draft order as a way of uh, grabbing an additional pick. Certainly, if they like a guy who I think or who they think might be available in the 20s, and if you can net an additional draft pick or two in yeah. order to move down the order, I think that'll be a serious consideration. I, I also wouldn't be stunned entirely. Just considering how this draft breaks down, if there's a guy, one one or two guys that they really like that they don't think they're going to get, I, I wouldn't be stunned by them moving up. But but I think moving back in the draft order is hmm. is honestly a pretty likely possibility. Uh, wow. Something that they'll strongly consider heading into the draft on the well, I guess it's July seventh in July seventh in Montreal. Yeah, yeah. I have the advantage of having a laptop in in front of me, uh, Thomas. Marco Casper is the uh, Austrian. Thank forward. you. I Sorry, I, yeah. I for some reason I got I was tripping over because his name is Marco, and so is the Austrian forward who was drafted by the Minnesota Wild recently. So I wanted to call him Rossi so badly, and I was just like, I'm mm. just not going to slip over this. I'm just going to leave it. Yeah, but yeah, Marco pro- Casper. That's yeah, Casper. mark of a pro there, right? Yeah, good guy. Okay, uh, well, not Marco Casper, but uh, Thomas. Hey, Thomas. Apparently, be- he's a good guy too. <laughs> yeah, they're all good guys. Uh, high Tom- character, high character player. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Thomas, before we let you go, uh, you tweeted this out uh, last night, and more information has come out. But you had no problem with uh, Keith Kachuk holding on to his hat after his son Matthew got himself a hat trick. Absolutely not. Gentlemen, I have a size eight head. This is a melon right here. Mm -hmm. And I also I also am bald. And when you're bald and neither of you would know this, um, but when you're bald, the stakes of having your hat are really high because you need to protect yourself from the sun. Right. Like you don't want to you don't want to be working on your mole farm up there. So as I, you know, watched Kachuk, you know, and, and it wasn't just that he didn't throw it. It's that he took it off his head no. so people would stop asking him about it. And then he held onto the brim like, you know, you could see him like white knuckling, like, I'm not throwing this hat. And <laughs> I think I could just relate. Immediately, I knew exactly where he was at, which is like, it's hard for me to find hats I like, hats that suit my giant melon. I, I, I need this tomorrow because it's going to be a sunny day in Calgary. 
and I need to protect my head from from the UV rays. I just immediately knew where he was coming from. I think that's totally fair to throw or not to throw your hat. You're not obligated to throw a hat just because you're related to the guy who's right. who scores the hat trick. It's a forty dollar hat, and sometimes they're hard to replace, particularly for those of us, um, you know, like like Keith and I who have uh, the wide circumference, right? It takes some time yeah. to circumnavigate our melons. And yes. so you got you to gotta be protective of the good headwear you find. I, I can relate. I'm, I'm close. Now, I, I said that more information has come out. Apparently, with Keith, he's had that hat on, and they've won every single time. So yeah, that's it's it. like a good luck charm. That's why he did So maybe a combination got of the it. two. Yeah. I, I, mean, I mean, that sounds convenient. That sounds convenient. That's something like he didn't want to admit that he... Uh, finds it difficult to buy hats. So, um, yeah, it's lucky. Yeah, it's a lucky hat. Mm. Sure, yeah, okay. <laughs> okay, bud. The Thomas, real heads know. Yeah. Any thoughts on who the Canucks might take in the third round? <laughs> pick? Do they have a third round pick? I don't even know. Well, they don't have um, a second no. because of, uh, as you said, the OEL trade, but they yeah. have well, one in the well, third. Well, gentlemen, let me let me quickly give you one more, and without Rick taking up the rest of my time with... 37 the minutes. Question. You got 37 minutes. Go. Put yeah, the perfect. clock on them. <laughs> uh, you know... This draft is going to come and go, and then I do think the big story, obviously, is going to be the local kids at the very top of the 2023 draft class. And obviously, yeah. Connor Bedard is the best. Connor Bedard is the best prospect. I'm not saying he's going to be the best player, but at this stage, you know, entering his draft season, he's he's poised to be the best prospect to ever come out of Western Canada, and he's a West Vancouver prospect. But don't sleep either on. Abbotsford's Zach Benson. He's still in the WHL playoffs playing Winnipeg. for the Winnipeg Ice. So good. Yeah, that, that that Winnipeg team is loaded too, right? Yeah. Just like up and down the lineup loaded. Guy's not getting a ton of power play one time at this stage of his career. But next season, next season, he's going to be a bigger part of that team. I mean, there are amateur evaluators up and down the league who look at that guy and say, if you're looking for the next Braden Point, if you're looking for the next player of that caliber, like Zach Benson might be the guy. There's a real chance that we're talking about Benson, probably not in the Bedard tier going into 2023, but could he get into the conversation with Fentilli, with, with Mitchkov? I, I really think he could. And those are two local products, certainly going to be in the top 10. I think they both could break to be in the top five. That's going to be a huge story. The moment the draft ends in Montreal, this is about to be the best draft class we've ever seen come out of the city of Vancouver uh, in 2023. And, and I think that's just worth us all acknowledging uh, particularly because Vancouver's churned out, like the city's churned out so many offensive artists uh, who've had success over the last five, six years. When you think about Kent Johnson, when you think about Ma yep. Matt Barzell, and when and when you think about these two gentlemen coming, um, it's uh, it, 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 there's a chance that this is a golden era for NHL stars, um, you know, out of the, out of the lower mainland, uh, and that's a pretty exciting story too that we should all acknowledge and, and get excited about. Um, you know, with our with our Vancouver pride, our chests pumped out that there's so much talent coming out of our city right now. Thomas, outstanding. Thanks so much. Appreciate it. See you, boys.